Hey guys, it is Patrick. And before you dive into this intermediate accounting lesson, I wanted you to know that you can actually download the notes for this section and specifically this lesson that you're about to watch if you head to my website at www.patrickleemsa.com or you can head over to the description link that's below and I'll put that link to those notes below where you can find them, download them, and print them, and follow along as you watch this lesson. So go do that, and here is your intermediate accounting lesson. All right, in this last lesson in this section, we are gonna go over an example of a financial statement example, specifically a cash and accrual, looking at the activities of an organization during a set period of time, and then classifying the transactions based on cash or accrual. So let's take a look at our example prompt. It says, listed below are several transactions that took place during the first two years of operations for the law firm of Pete, Pete and Roy. So we've got some information here about amounts billed and cash collected, as well as salaries and utilities. And we've got some additional information below. So let's take a look at the additional information. So in addition, you learn that the firm incurred utility costs of $35,000 in year one, that there were no liabilities at the end of year two, no anticipated bad debt on receivables, and that insurance policy covers a three year period. So this is all information that's important for us because we might have some cash that was paid out for utilities and it looks like we had cash paid out for insurance policies, but they might not be in the right period from an accrual standpoint. Uh, a couple of things that it wants to do is to calculate the net, in net operating cash flows for year one and year two to prepare an income statement for each year according to the accrual accounting method. And then lastly, determine the amount of receivables from clients that the firm would show in its year one and year two balance sheet prepared accounting to the accrual accounting method. So let's take a look here. We'll go step by step. We'll start with calculating the net operating cash flows for year one and two. So we've got this table here to make it a little bit easy. So remember that Calculating the net ca operating cash flow all has to do with how much cash comes in versus how much cash goes out. It's basically the cash basis of accounting. So if we look here, cash collected. So if we look at the table here, the amount billed to clients for the year was $170,000. That doesn't really tell us if cash was received. That just means that we billed $170,000. It says cash collected from clients was $160,000. So that would represent how much cash we collected from our customers from revenue generating activities. So of the $170,000 that we earned, we only collected $160,000, which is what's important in this part of this question. So cash collected in year one would be $160,000. Now, as we are doing year one and year two, I can then just go right over to the next column and look at year two. In year two, they collected $190,000. So I'm going to go ahead and dump in 190,000 in year two as cash collected. So that's cash in. Now we need to look at cash out. So cash dispersed, and it's looking for three things here, four, uh, three things here, salaries, utilities, and purchase of insurance policy. Now, because we're not thinking about accrual accounting at this point, all we're looking for is what cash went out for salaries, utilities, and purchase of insurance policy in year one and in year two. So if we look here, it seems that we look at salaries. Salaries paid to employees for services rendered during the year was $90,000. So we know that we paid $90,000 in cash to our employees. So we're gonna subtract that in year one's cash outflow. I'm gonna put parentheses to signify cash out. Let's go to utilities now. Utilities, we've got $30,000. And again, all of this has to do with cash disbursements. So $30,000. So we'll subtract $30,000 from year one. And then in year one, purchase of an insurance policy. So it looks like we purchased $60,000 of insurance policy in year one. So $60,000 will go there. And so if we got 160,000 minus 90, minus 30, minus 60, 
we get a loss of $20,000. And when we say loss, we mean cash base loss, not necessarily accrual base loss. So we had $20,000 of ca more cash go out our doors than come in. We had 160 come in and it looks like we had 180 that went out out. Now let's look at year two. So we've already got our cash collected. Now let's look at our cash disbursements. For salary, we dispersed $100,000 even. So we're going to subtract $100,000. And then for our utilities, we paid out, it looks like $40,000. So we'll put $40,000 here in this row. And then purchase of insurance policy. Well, if we look at our column two for year two, it shows that we didn't actually pay anything for insurance policy. And that would make sense because in year one, we paid $60,000 for three years, meaning that we normally wouldn't have a payment in year two and possibly not in year three. So we had, had zero cash go out in year two respectfully for our insurance policy. So 190,000 minus 140,000 gets us 50,000 in positive cash inflow. And so in this case for year two, we had $50,000 more come in than cash going out. So for our cash, net operating cash flows for year one and two, for year one, we had a $20,000 excessive cash out. And in year two, we have a 50,000 positive cash in. Now let's move on to part two. Part two is where we then use the accrual method. We're gonna have the same information that is presented to us already, but we're gonna use the accrual method. What is the accrual method? Revenues is booked when it's earned, not necessarily when it's paid, and expenses incurred, uh, expenses is booked when it's incurred, not necessarily when it's paid. So let's take a look here. We've got an empty spot here. Prepare an income statement for each year according to the accrual accounting method. So in year one, the question is how much revenues did we earn and how much do we need to book on our financial statement? So here we build our clients $170,000 for services that were rendered. So that would be our revenues for the period. So even though we only collected 160, we're going to put 170 because that's how much we've earned during the period. Just because we didn't get paid 10 extra thousand dollars doesn't mean we haven't earned it. We'll probably collect on that in the next year. So revenues for year one is gonna be $170,000. And then going to our expenses. So looking at our salaries expenses, looking at seeing if there's any notes, there isn't really any notes uh, that I can see here. So the assumption here would be that the salaries paid to the employees were also what was expensed during the year. So we're gonna subtract $90,000 from there. And then our utilities. So if you see here, we've got in our notes, in addition, you learned that the firm incurred utility costs of $35,000. So we incurred $35,000, but how much did we pay? Well, we paid only $30,000. So we know that under the accrual accounting method, we're gonna book the expense that we actually incurred, not necessarily what we actually paid. So we incurred 35,000, even though we only paid 30,000. So from an accrual standpoint, our expense for utility costs for year one is $35,000. So we're gonna subtract $35,000 from there. And then our purchase of our inventory policy is our next step. So we know that in year one, we spent $60,000 of uh, $60,000 for insurance. And that insurance is for three years according to our information or additional information. So it covers a three year period. So we know that $60,000 is paid in year one and that is supposed to take over three years of insurance expense. So we need to allocate the cost in this case, $60,000 over the useful life or the benefit period in which we're gonna receive the benefit for having insurance. In this case, it's three years. So 60,000 divided by three is 20,000. So every year, insurance is costing us $20,000. So in year one, it's costing us $20,000. We might've paid the insurance company 60,000, but in reality, it's only costing us 20,000. 
What happens at the end of year one if we decide to go with another insurance company? We can cancel that policy, and because the insurance company hasn't earned the additional $40,000, they are obligated to refund us $40,000. So this is why we're going to say we're, we're going to input the expense at $20,000 rather than at $60,000 because we could get a refund if we were to cancel the policy, or maybe the policy is for our building and our building um, go, um, is no longer there, or we sell the building then the insurance company is obligated to give our money back. So if we do 170 minus 90 minus 35 minus 20,000, we get a net income of $25,000, which is very different from the 20,000 of cash outflow, net cash outflow that we did on the cash basis in part one. Moving on to year two and year two, we incurred a revenues of $220,000. So we'll put $220,000 here. Salaries, again, no additional information on salaries. So the assumption here is salaries is going to be what we paid out in cash, which is $100,000. And then utilities. So a couple of kinks here with utilities. So it says that in, in addition, you learned that the firm incurred utility costs of $35,000 in year one, uh, that there were no liabilities at the end of year two, meaning that in year two, not only did we pay the rest of our utility expenses that we didn't pay, we also paid all of ours and we have no liability going forward. So if we look at year two, we paid $40,000, but not all $40,000 represents expenses that we incurred this year because we know that we didn't pay $5,000 of expenses that we incurred last year. We paid 30,000, we should have paid 35, meaning we gotta make up that $5,000 somewhere, we're gonna make that up in year two. So of this $40,000, $5,000 goes to last year's expense, which means $35,000, which is the rest, goes to this year's expense. So our accrual, Utilities expense is $35,000 there. And then our insurance expense or purchase of an insurance policy, again, mirrors year one. We had $20,000 of expense in year one. We'll have 20,000 in year two, and then 20,000 in year three. So 20,000 goes here in year two. And then if we do the math here, we get 220,000 minus 100,000 minus 35 minus 20, we get $65,000 in profit. So as you can see, you know, what we've done or what we've seen here is if we look at the cash basis, it's almost like we went a negative to a positive and that's only because of cash flows. But what did we do? We prepaid our insurance, insurance for three years. So we got to spread that expense over three years. And we also didn't pay all of our utilities expenses, which are not reflected in year one. So it makes it look like we had a $20,000 loss. But if we use the accrual accounting, we actually had a positive net income in year one and year two. All right, last part of this problem here, determine the amount of receivables from clients that the firm would show in year one and two. Balance sheet prepared accounting to the accrual accounting model. So we've been talking about how we've got uh, revenues of 170,000 year one, 220 in year two, but we only collected a portion. So what this question is asking is, what would have that accounts receivable balance been at the end of year one and at the end of year two if we didn't collect everything that we should have? So the way that I have this set up here is I've got a table. We're gonna start with beginning. We're gonna add any amounts that we build to a client. We're gonna subtract any cash collected, which then would give us our ending balance and accounts receivable. This might be a familiar equation as we use it a lot when we talk about T accounts, beginning plus minus equals ending. So starting with year one, our beginning accounts receivable would have been zero because this would be its first year. So we didn't start with any receivables. During that first year, we incur, we uh, earned 220, uh, sorry, we earned $170,000 of revenues. So that would have increased our eight accounts receivable by $170,000. So we'll put plus 170. And then during the year, our clients are obviously paying us, so they paid us 160,000. So we'll subtract that from our accounts payable balance since those clients no longer owe us that 160,000. So what's left? How much more do we need to collect from our customers? We need to collect an additional $10,000 to true up everything that we've earned. 
Well, the ending is always the beginning of the next year or the next fiscal year. So the ending was 10,000, which means the ending of year one is 10,000, which means the beginning of year two is going to be 10,000 as well. So we'll start off with the $10,000 balance that is owed to us by our customers. And then in year two, we did a little bit better. We, uh, we earned $220,000 of revenues. So I'm gonna increase my accounts receivable by $220,000. And then we also collected from our clients. We don't know necessarily, did we collect all of year one? Do we only collect a year and year two? And that $10,000 is still owed to us by our clients. But if we do the math here, we received $190,000 of cash from our customers. So we're going to subtract $190,000 from accounts receivable. And so we started the year with 10. We added another 220 to accounts receivable. We received 190,000 in cash. Therefore, we still have $40,000 that's left to be received from our customers. So that is what this third part of this uh, question is all about. So what are we doing here? So a couple of things that to wrap up this whole entire section. The first part here was understanding the difference between cash and accrual. And we talked about in this section that cash basis is typically used by small businesses um, because it's very easy. The owner just has to look at their bank statement and follow their bank statement. They don't need to know a lot of the complexities that come with accrual accounting. With accrual accounting, it's usually used by bigger businesses or that have accounts that understand the accrual method. And the reason why most businesses like to use the accrual method, because it actually tells us what actually happened during the period when it comes to, when it comes from a financial, um, financial aspect. So, you know, our expenses are expense in the period that we incurred them rather than necessarily the, when the cash was paid. So for larger business, it makes sense because it gives us a better idea of what did they do financially in their operations. This last part here is all about reconciling that difference between cash and accrual in that the cash that we received may be different than what we should have, re have received and therefore need to reconcile that on our balance sheet so that we know how much our customers owe us. So that is a look at this financial statement element question. Hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching this lesson. If you enjoy what you saw, make sure you give it a thumbs up and don't forget to write something in the comment section below like, I don't know, what's your favorite superhero? If you are looking for the next intermediate accounting lesson, make sure you click on this button right over here. And if you want to head to my website and see all of the lessons that are available, make sure you head to my website right here. Until next time, we'll see you in the next video.